Good morning, good afternoon and good evening everyone. My name is Kashif and I am a PhD student at the University of New South Wales, Sydney, Australia. Today I will be presenting an immune inspired anomaly detection framework for IoT devices. Please note that this is not an algorithm or a model for detection, it is a complete framework. In this presentation, I will start with the problem statement and its significance. I will then briefly talk about what botnets are and how their command and control system works. I will then describe our approach that will include the key features that is that are offered, the lines of defense that are provided, the main concepts and the algorithms. I will then take you to the evaluation in which I will describe the data set which is used, the attack overview and then I will draw a comparison between the performance of our work compared to the other state of the art techniques. Let's talk about the problem statement. In this slide I am presenting a graph fetched from statistica.com in June 2020. As you can see that it is estimated that by 2025 there will be more than 75 billion IoT devices in the field and also that the growth of these devices is exponential. Our aim to detect anomalous entities from all of these devices. These anomalies are mainly botnets. Let's have a look on how significant the problem is. In this slide, I'm presenting a real world attack that was planted back in 2016 on a big US based DNS name server provider called Dyn. This attack was planted by IoT botnets by making use of commercially available IoT devices. For example, CCTV IP cameras, residential gateways and baby monitors. The attack was so powerful that it generated a traffic of the magnitude 1 terabits per second, much stronger than the previous attacks. It is also estimated that such attacks are not uncommon and they cost billion, up to a billion dollar loss to companies every year. The border source codes are available as I have presented the links to the two most commonly used botnets. Let's see how do they work. The botnets are made up of sophisticated systems that are integrated with each other. We have got a command and code control system with distributed databases which enable adversaries to fulfill their malicious in intent. It contains scanners which look for vulnerable devices. The loaders are the systems that contain malicious softwares and scripts that can be loaded onto the target devices. The way they work is that they have got botnets which are basically infected IoT devices. They are able to perform dis distributed denial of service attacks on the target devices. They can also propagate onto normal devices to make them botnets. Now I will present the key features of our proposed framework. Number one, we offer a layered detection. This means that our detection is provided at different levels. Our architecture is also dynamic. This is needed because of the fact that botnets are evolving over time and there is no static signature of a botnet. We also offer a mechanism by which we detect anomalies that are not even known yet. Our framework works under minimal supervision. This means that we don't require much data labels. We also provide opportunities for the experts and admins to supervise the learning process. We achieve highly accurate results 
with low false detection. We also provide very low latency compared to the other state of the art techniques that we'll discuss in the evaluation section. Our threat model assumes a number of internet connected IoT devices in the presence of adversaries. These devices may contain infected devices with botnet programs as shown by orange color. These botnets are not only capable of planting distributed denial of service attacks, but they are also capable, capable of converting target IoT devices into botnets. Our work provides the detection in layers called lines of defense as provided by the human immune system. The first line of defense is provided by idiopathy aglo agents. You can relate them as IgG antibodies in the human immune system. The second line of defense is provided by toxin osprey agents. These two lines of defense are not specific to a particular type of attack and they form innate detection. The third line of defense is provided by osponin agents of type S, I and E. These different types may be related to the antibodies, vaccination and plasma transfer equivalent of the immune system. This line of defense is specific to a type of attack. This is the overall architecture of the system. On the left hand side, we have the input data, which is mainly the traffic generated by the IoT devices. And on the right hand side, we have the output in which we perform the detection of outliers, botnets, we generate alerts, and we provide experts and admins to view different statuses. Our innate detection is comprised of idiopathy aglos and toxin aspirin agents as, as presented previously. The core of our system is hemiopathic system which contains generator, optimizer, trainer and separator of neural network models. These models are called opsonins that provide the adaptive detection of the whole system. They are specific to each product. The first line of defense is provided by autoencoders and that forms the innate detection. In the training phase as shown in the figure A, we feed the normal instances to an autoencoder that will represent data into a low level form and then will decode it into the image of normal instances. Once this neural network has been trained, we pass the normal traffic through this trained autoencoder to get the reconstructed data. And then we compute the reconstruction error of the input data that will generate alerts. Please note that this is a very basic type of botnet detection and that is not specific to any particular behavior. And that is just the first line of defense problem. The adaptive detection as proposed by our framework comprises of neural networks that are capable of changing dynamically. As you can see on the left hand side of the figure, we show how new neurons are added. And on the right hand side, we show how new layers are added into the network. So we have got old connections, disconnections and new connections. Now I will be presenting the dynamic network update mechanism proposed by our framework. This framework is responsible for ensuring that we detect the novel anomalies that are not known yet. This algorithm takes three things into account. Number one, the number of features we may evolve over time. Secondly, the accuracy to see if the neural networks are still good enough to perform a highly accurate detection. If you can see that once we detect that there are more features coming into the data, 
and the current net neural network is not good enough to provide accurate detection. We take an existing pre-trained network and then we separate it and retrain it for the newly arrived features. The second part of the algorithm is related to overfitting. What we do is we provide regularization. We shrink the network by removing neurons and we also remove layers and then select the best network that is good for that scenario. And the third case is underfitting. We expand the network by adding neurons and adding layers and then select the best one that suits the needs. We have made use of a public data set that we downloaded from University of California Irvine's machine learning repository. We have also reformatted the data set so that it can be more useful and we have placed it at a public platform called Kaggle. You can download the entire data set from our Kaggle homepage. This data set contains IoT traffic data and various statistics of the data from nine commercially available IoT devices. These devices are doorbells, PNV cameras, baby monitors, thermostat, IPT, IP CCTV cameras, and webcam. This slide presents the number of instances that are available in the data set for all of the nine commercially available devices. These instances are benign, this means no attack, GAFGIT or BASHLAT attacks, and Mirai botnet attacks. Now we compare the results of our proposed framework with the current state of the art techniques. They include support vector machines, lo local outlier factors, isolation forest, and an autoencoder based detection mechanism. As described previously, since the data set is not balanced, the accuracy alone may not be enough. We also need to make sure that we produce the lowest false positive and false negative results. As you can see from the graph, the average values of accuracies provided by our framework is higher than compared to the other ones. While minimizing the false positive and false negative rates. This proves the strength of our framework. In addition, we don't our, our work is not just an algorithm or a model to detect botnets. It's a comprehensive framework that can evolve over time to detect botnets that are not known yet. Now I will describe the effects of dynamic network updates. The dynamic network updates are responsible for ensuring that our system is live and evolves over time. This is important so that we can not only detect the botnets that are known, but also we can detect the bot the botnets that are not known yet and, and, they be, and their behavior changes over time. In this experiment, we started with a neural network which is trained with let's say x number of features. After the completion of the training, we fed different number of features which were more than the previously trained network to see how the performance of the neural network is. As you can see on the left hand side of the figure, the accuracy, precision, recall and F1 scores of the network were low when we provided more number of features. Then our system retained the, the previously trained neural network with the new data. And as you can see that the accuracy, recall, precision, recall and F1 score, they went high. Latency is also an important factor when it comes to botnet detection. Latency, a low latency system means we can detect the botnets in real time. In this slide, I'm presenting a relative comparison of our proposed framework with the other state of the art techniques and as and as you can see we provide the lowest detection latency compared to all of the techniques that are available that's the end of my presentation and i'm thankful to you for joining my session if you have any questions please feel free to reach out to me or my supervisor Dr.